It is spring, moonless night in the small town, starless and Bible black. The cobbled streets silenced on the hunched quarters and rabbit's wood limping invisible down to the slow black, slow black, crow black, fishing boat bobbin sea. Well, hello there my friends. Welcome back to the Scott Reed Project and a little bit of culture for you. Now, I ain't no Richard Burton, but I do love that opening line of Under Milk Wood by Dylan Thomas. And what has it got to do with what we're doing today? Well, that mention of the Crow Black. And as you've guessed, we are doing Crow. Now, you know here on the SRP, we will try anything. We've done all sorts of funky stuff, but to be honest with you, this could be a meal too far. Like I said then, it's the crow, it's a scavenger, so yeah, uh, I don't want to dwell too much on that. I mean, if it was a rook, not so bad, a young rook, but a crow, carrion, yeah, I'm not convinced, but hey-ho, we'll give it a go. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm quite intrigued, you know, because you can eat pretty much anything, but uh, I'm not sure, I am not sure, but we'll try and work some magic. So all I want to do then, I'm not going to muck about, I just want to breast these out. Now there ain't a lot of meat on these, so we'll just quickly nip the breasts out. I know they're going to be a deep, deep red. So a tiny little portion when you think of the size of that bird, that is all you get. So what I'm going to do then is quickly breast out the other two and we're going to think about cooking these bad boys up. Fingers crossed. So there are my six crow breast fillets. Just smells like pigeon really. So what I want to do then very quickly is I'm just going to just wash these off and then I'm going to just make up a very light saline solution of water and salt and just let them sit in there to draw any blood out just for about 20 minutes then we're going to knock up a proper brine with some cider some aromatics and then we will let it sit in there for a couple of hours just have a look at these now i mean i've never ever prepared these i don't know what they're going to be like you know uh, a lot of people it's not their thing at all just see if that will peel off that membrane. Maybe get the knife on that, but just giving them a swill. And then I should dry them quickly on my cloth. And like I said, I'm gonna make up a cleansing solution. I mean, you wouldn't know they were crow. Hey, how do I do it? You wouldn't know they were crow. Anyway, right, let's get rid of that. Give them a pat dry. And then very simply, just some water in a bowl. I'm gonna get some salt. There's no measurements here. Get some salt in there. Give it a swill. And then just place those in there. And that will help to Pull any blood that's left in these breasts out. We'll give it about 20 minutes. I think too fancy. So while we're waiting for our crow breast to purge, we are going to knock up our brine. So very simple then. We are going to start with some good cider, some rough rider. Get some of that in. About 350 mil. Mm -hmm. Finest apple champagne known to man. Let's get some of that in. Then into that, we are going to add three bay leaves. Just give them a crush, just to release their essential oils. Get that in. Next, we are gonna put in some peppercorns. I suppose half a teaspoon, get those in. Next, we are gonna put in what? tablespoon of juniper berries then we are going to put in 
a small bunch of thyme. Let's get that in there. And then half a head, half a head of garlic. Get that in. We're going to add some salt. Then we're going to add some brown sugar. Hey, Keith, Keith, what do you want, man? Let's get some of that in there. And what we need to do then is just to bring that up to the boil and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Very, very simple. You could add whatever you want, just stirring in that sugar and that salt. Should be nice oh, and aromatic. So I'm just going to add a spot of water, I bet about a a hundred mil and then we can bring that back up to the boil again. I'm actually going to add just a pinch of dried sage. So when your brine has been simmering for 10 minutes we need to cool it down. You could put a handful of ice in it if you want. What I'm going to do is just going to put it in here and put it once it stops steaming into my fridge and as soon as it's cold we can get those crow breasts in there. The crow black slow black. I hope they taste all right. Okay then, they've been soaking in that little cleansing brine. Just going to take them out, dry them off. You can see the colour of the water there. It's pulled out any blood. Beautiful. Just leave those there a moment. My brine has cooled down nicely. That chiller of mine is just so awesome. So we get that in there. You could put this in a Ziploc bag if you want to. And we're just going to get our crow breasts in there. Now leave them for a couple of hours or 12 hours max just to let them take on all that flavour. How easy is that? Well my friends, now it's time for the fun part. So these have been sat in that brine then for a good couple of hours. Now this brine recipe I got off the internet. I will put the link to it in the description. It just seems a great idea to help the crow on its way. Now I posted that I was cooking this on Facebook and the reaction has been amazing. People are going like, oh, you're not gonna really eat that, are you? It's a scavenger, you know, carrion crow, the name is in it. Others are saying, you know, go for it. Now. Not to be confused with the rook, obviously we all know years ago, rook pie, we've all heard of that, but this is totally, totally different. So what I'm gonna do then, I think I'm gonna cook it a couple of ways. I think I'm just gonna try it pan fried first to see what, uh, what that, how they react and what they taste like. And I think next I will bat one out and breadcrumb it up and fry it up that way. And then if that works, I may, in another video, do a crow pie, four and 20 blackbirds in a pie. Right then, I should just go and swill these under the tap. I'm thinking about maybe trying to take that membrane off as well because we know they're just going to bow up when it hits the heat. So here they are nicely prepared. I've took the membrane off. They've been brined. Let's get a few in the pan. Okay then, so like I said, just simply pan fry one. Now, do you do a medium rare or do you cook them through? I do not know. Like I said, this is the first time I have done one. What I'm going to do is just put a bit of this beautiful extra virgin rapeseed oil in and then a little bit of butter. Get that in. I think we'll get a bit of salt on the plate, some pepper. and just coat half of them in that seasoning. Simple as, just get them gently in the pan. Oh, look at them.
I reckon they are done. So I'm going to take those out and rest them on the plate. Okay then, let's do this. In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's cut through this and see what it looks like. Have a look at that. Let's try a bit. Smells perfect. Bloody hell. That's actually unbelievable. Just have a look at that. That is crow. Mm. I am not joking when I say this, but that is absolutely superb. It's actually hard to think that this was a crow. It is so tender and that brine is just genius. And it's just beefy, gamey. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. You've just got to get out of your head that this was a scavenger, but the flavor cooked like that, absolutely superb. I cannot get over it. Right, let's bat some out, breadcrumb them up with some chili in. I'm on a roll, baby. Okay then, so I honestly can't believe how good that was. You know, I didn't know what to expect. You know, it's not the most uh, enticing bird when you think of food, is it the crow? But I was absolutely blown away. So all I'm gonna do then is just very, very gently, I'm just gonna butterfly these out. You can see where it was shot there. I mean, there's not a lot on them, but what there is, I mean, awesome. Absolutely awesome. So, I'm going to get a cloth under there. And you have to excuse the noise here. I'm just going to bat them out a little bit. Not too much. Very gentle. And then I'm going to pané them. With some breadcrumbs, going to get some herbs, going to get some spices in there. And then we are going to fry these off because I think these will be really, really tasty. So we're going to dredge them obviously in flour so we get some flour in there. I'm going to get some salt in there. And some pepper. I think I might need a little bit more flour. And I'm going to get some dried thyme in there as well. Not too much because it's so powerful. And I'm going to try some chilli. Get that in there. Okay, we'll give that a mix up. Get our crow breasts in there. I mean, I'm going to stick my neck out here. I mean, I'm a big... Big, big fan of pigeon. Obviously, I love beef. This was beefy, very, very pigeon-esque to the point of, you know, I think sticking my neck out, like I said, it is almost better than pigeon. But, you know, these are healthy crows. I know that sounds silly, but these are out from out in the countryside, you know. We shot these, me and Coop shot these. And uh, they've been on all kinds of stuff out there, not just carrion, I suppose, but uh, barley and beans and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, they were uh, superb. Right, let's get me an egg in there. Very quickly then, into the egg, into the breadcrumbs. I don't think I'm going to double dip these because I want them to retain that beautiful flavour. You know, I don't want to mask it. And that's what I was thinking in my head, you know, I was thinking, oh, have I, you know, gone too far this time with the crow? But, uh, no. Perfect. Get that in there. Get them breadcrumbs. So in with a drop of rapeseed oil again. And then a bit of butter. My breaded crow. Just get it 
in the pan. Do you know what? I don't think they need very long, just till we got a nice colour on them. So we get these out, and we'll just drain them. More crowy delights. So the pan fried ones were just absolutely superb. So we're just experimenting, just finding different ways to use the crow. That sounds weird. So I just think I breadcrumbed it. I'll just give it a try. Again, that is absolutely unbelievable. Just look at that. I just can't find fault with it. Well, there you go. The humble crow. You know, I just cannot fault it. I cannot believe how good that tastes. And the next one I'm gonna do, I will do a 4 and 20 blackbird pie. I will do the same technique, brine it and make a beautiful pie. But to be honest, I'm just totally blown away. It's an absolute triumph. So, if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes down here. Also, please do check me out on my social media, on my Facebook, Scott Ree and the Scott Ree Project. Also on my Twitter, the Scott Ree Project. And if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. You'll see the link in the description. So until next time, I know a lot of you guys and girls out there, you shoot pigeons, you shoot crows, and you are not quite convinced that a crow is edible. Believe me, it is. It is absolutely superb. So next time you shoot a few, take them home and give it a go. You will not be disappointed. See you again, my friends. Take care. I'm going to have one more. One more. How many times do I say that? One more crow, baby. Mm.